Welcome, everyone. I'm Alfred Lamont Weber, and indeed, it is a great pleasure and a privilege uh, uh, to be here with uh, Venus Contactee. And in this first part one uh, uh, of a special series on the Venusian, the statements of the Venusian hier uh, hierarchy of light, Robert Potter. Welcome, Robert. Albert, as always, it's a pleasure to be here with you. You're one of the few people who grasps the importance of the information that I'm sharing and recognize that I am having a real face-to-face -face contact with the Venusians and that um, my story is absolutely true and real. So I appreciate sharing the information with you. I've been a lifeline, lifetime contactee for 48 years, face-to-face -face meeting with Pleiades Venusians. So uh, thank you for having me on here. This is probably one of the more, um, it's, it, it's, it's a very important message that we're gonna be sharing here. And um, you're gonna, ha you have the links up there to my website and I think, uh, Maybe I'll give you another one that shares the actual message, but I'm posting a lot of amazing information from them and we can delve, delve into that everything, Venusian, Omnek, Omnek, Dr. Frank Strange's or whatever you'd like to go. Oh, sure, sure. You, you, you know, one of the first areas that I'd like to touch on, uh, which you mentioned in depth in various aspects, is the Venusian connection to Jesus. And yeah. that is so deep. Now, before we do that, I want to take about four minutes, as you mentioned. If you could just take a few minutes to describe your connection to Dr. Frank Strangers and a bit about him, because we have some individuals who are trying to say that he's a Mason and therefore a Luciferian and a Satanist. And that does not square at all with the connections of Dr. Frank Strange's to Valiant Thor, to yourself, to Jesus, to Mary, to, to the whole thing. And I, I'd like to have your direct words uh, and then so that we can go forward because there is so much trollism out there on planet Earth at this moment. Thank you for your patience on My this pleasure. issue. My pleasure. And I'm going to share, uh, I met uh, or saw Dr. Frank Stranges and heard him speak several times in the um, early 80s. One of my close friends, Gabriel Green, was a close friend of him. And I had read A Stranger at the Pentagon early on, probably in the late 70s even so he was always kind of a, a mythical figure and a interesting part of my process of growth um, we became friends when i joined his inner circle meeting in 2004 or 2005 um, i had uh, been called to join him and guided to uh, connect with him so i'll tell you a little about his history so he grew up in Brooklyn, and this is all going to come out in Dr. Uh, Keller's book that um, I'm writing an introduction and a chapter actually about my personal association with Dr. Frank Stranges. But Dr. Frank Stranges is absolutely not a Satanist. He was kind of more of a Bible thumper, actually, very religious. Um, his father had a, a, a lame leg, and um, they, he uh, went to a Baptist uh, meeting. Uh, near his home in Brooklyn, and they prayed over his father, and his father's leg that was withered became whole in the name of Jesus. So the laying on of hands and true faith was uh, firmly established in this young man's heart, and um, he went to seminary school. He asked so many questions. He said the 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 pastors uh, cried when he left. He said, I said the, the pastors are crying. They're saying, he said, no, father. He said, they're crying because I am leaving. He asked so many questions. He made a living out when he was reading some scripture and it said, it said, and then abundanced on the table. And he was like, abundanced on the table. I mean, he was, so he went and researched it and it's, it's, he went and found the actual historical thing. It says, 
it was abundance danced on the table. So he was a questioner. And of course, from his meeting of Valiant Thor, Valiant Thor uh, did not mollify him in any way, shape or form, but went to tune him into the message. But Valiant Thor, when he first met him, you know, he said, uh, he said, what do you, he, he goes, uh, where are you from? He goes, he goes, I come from the planet, you know, as a morning store, Venus. Another question that came early on in Dr. Frank's life, uh, because he was a pastor, he was speaking at a seminary, actually, the day before that meeting with uh, him at, uh, and he was up there talking and he was signing a book called Saucerama. He was a secret service agent. So uh, working on the paper hanger. So he had access to the corridors of power there and used to go on the Pentagon and he would pound on the table of, I think, General Ramey or something. And what's the story of this, these Valiant Thor character, the UFOs? And he goes, ah, oh, Dr. Frank, go back to preaching hellfire and brimstone. Leave the space people to us, right? So um, he, he was a very enthusiastic preacher. And uh, um, so, I'll, so in this meeting, he says, because uh, what do you think about Jesus? And he says, and he said, uh, Valiant Thor uh, um, said, yes, uh, he spoke about Christ and that he was uh, born of a virgin, which is probably um, uh, maybe one of, maybe it was Alon even who maybe used a technique to extract Jesus and his twin brother Thomas from the womb of Mary. Now, um, so those things, those details I, I haven't uh, received. Uh, that was stated in the, um, uh, as the words of uh, Valiant Thor. Dr. Frank was very honest. His level of contact was far beyond that of mortal men, kind of like a Superman. He was chosen as a representative and he went on board the craft repeatedly. Uh, he went on twice a year for three days. He would go on board and he would look at the Akashic records and the history coin where he often talked about, um, you know, uh, some um, shepherds, uh, appearing at the life of Jesus and of course the three Magi and he also talked about um, looking at Moses and the burning bushes some of his favorite things that he would go back into the history coins or the Akashic records to learn about Christ and various things and of course he had a tremendous amount of uh, secrets because he was being shown in holographic images the the what's going on on the earth the earth would come up and the grove and they'd zoom in and they'd show different political situations and conversed with the other representatives from the earth a uh, dr lee nakamura a guy named uh, from switzerland named arthur kleinschmidt and there's one other i know that's um in california he's more local and relevant so i'm not going to mention his name but um these are people that go on board and work with the venusians and lend their um their ideas and, and information. Not all were public like Dr. Frank, but um, he enjoyed a lot of contact. The very first time he went on board was when Bobby Kennedy was killed. He had already been speaking obviously with Valiant Thor since 1957 and Valiant Thor, I think the next time he appeared in his car and he got, he just materialized in his car and he just goes, what the? He was really scared. He goes, please just call me and show up. You gave me a heart attack. So he was enjoying conversations with Valiant Thor and Bobby Kennedy came to his house once. He drove down, uh, he got a knock on the door and um, Bobby Kennedy was there and he opened the door and there was Bobby Kennedy was a little shorter, I think. And he looked out behind him and there were police and uh, the, the presidential candidate entourage. And, you know, probably you can imagine the neighbor picking up the, you know, watering the lawn, another lady in curlers grabbing the newspaper, another guy, who knows what was happening there, but uh, caused quite a stir in his neighborhood. And Valley and Thor goes, goes, Dr. Strange? <laughs> Dr. Strange is the comic book character. So he got that mixed up, I guess. I don't even know if Dr. Strange was out in 1968, but he goes, he goes, no, Dr. Strange is. He goes, what about this Valiant Thor? I want to talk to Valiant Thor. I think you know Valiant Thor. What's the story? Where is he right now? <laughs> Just didn't even enter, you know, Divin, you know, was very kind of rude. And Dr. Frank says, would you like to come in? He comes in, he goes, oh, yeah. So he comes in and he says to her and he says, well, where is Valiant Thor right now? He says, I don't know.
He goes, uh, how do you how do you get a hold of him? He goes, well, all you, what you can do is you can write a letter, and um, Valiant Thor will come and pick it up, and he will uh, respond, and I'll you know you give me a way I'll either contact you or whatever. So he goes, I don't have time to write a letter. And he goes, he goes, Doctor Frank goes, he goes, well you can leave then. He goes, okay, I'll write a letter. So he went down, he wrote a letter to Valiant Thor. And um, in the letter, um, I guess he had sealed it, but Valiant Thor materialized at Dr. Frank's and then he held it to his head and he just knows what's in it. And um, later, uh, Dr. Frank got the report afterward what he had written and he wanted to know who killed his brother and what the story was and all that. So um, this is part of the inner circle meeting when Valiant when Dr. Frank would go on board, he, for many years, um, he would um, go on board for three days and, and have these wonderful experiences. They took him around the globe. He was, went with Don to uh, Jimmy Carter's uh, inside the White House. And Jimmy Carter uh, walked up and he goes, you two look like interesting folks. And he looked up on his shoulder here and he goes, where are you guys from? And he goes, oh, State Department, huh? So he was at some meeting. So they have this, this ability to project image kind of like a Jedi mind trick. So, um, uh, so uh, Valiant Thor told him that he did go meet uh, Bobby Kennedy at uh, probably right before his speech. He appeared, he went into his room and knocked on his room door and uh, he invited them in and Bobby Kennedy was said he's pretty paranoid. He turned the TV on in the living room and um, he took him into the shower and he had a little radio. He played that on a little lower and he ran the water because he knew they could listen and stuff. And he uh, talked to Valiant Thor and Valiant Thor said, there are forces aligned against you. Um, you probably shouldn't um, run this time, but if you run in four years, you'll be successful. And Bobby was already deeply in it. And um, Dr. Frank told me also that uh, the bullet that killed him was from a, a police, a sheriff officer uh, who was part of his security detachment. The actual bullet was not from Sirhan Bizra Sirhan. So uh, maybe Rosie Greer deflected it or something. Sirhan, of course, had a mind control. There's a crystal in his ship. The picture was, was shown on the inquire of the front page there. So Sirhan was absolutely MK Ultra mind control guy. So uh, now was the sheriff, was it an accident? Um, I don't know. I mean, I, I heard there was a girl with an umbrella polka dot dress and there's some other stories around there. It doesn't matter, but uh, um, uh, they probably found out it was the sheriff and kept it undercover, which makes me think that it was uh, uh, the, the real hit. You know, not not the Patsy like Oswald. It was somewhere else. So I'll tell you one more story about Dr. Frank because he was attacked frequently in the early days, especially. He was attacked by James McDonald, uh, a major mucky muck in the uh, uh, aeronautic uh, weather thing. And he said, Dr. Frank Stranges is a, you know, a fraud and blah, blah, blah. blah and, you know, there's nothing and there's no science and there's nothing the Venusian story is absolute rubbish and so forth and so on. Now, um, I've shown you before, maybe people don't know this, but I was very close with Wendell Stevens, who wrote many books on extraterrestrials. I was getting Billy Myers contact notes at the age of 17, mailed to Fred Bell and I'd read these mimeograph papers. And I talked to Wendell, I took him to Egypt in 1991 he was one of the presenters there and I got to sit between him and Howard Menger or Valiant Thor on the plane that was jumping back and forth and on this trip from uh, 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 JFK to uh, Egypt. So they didn't get a minute's sleep with me peppering them with questions. So um, I talked to Wendell and he told me that he was part of the early warning jets that would be scrambled in the uh, 60s. Uh, to chase UFOs. That's how he knew and was very much involved in extraterrestrials and what led him to Billy Meyer and the incredible 
photographic evidence and researching and writing the famous book, UFO Contact from the Pleiades, which introduced the world to the Pleiadians. Now, um, in those notes, Billy Myers said that Semyasi said, I don't have any other contacts except for spurious scientific contacts. He may have forgotten that because uh, Billy Meyer denied that Fred Bell had a contact. Semyasi said, I don't know about Dr. Frank Strange's. And obviously, um, Wendell Stevens told me that they thought, my, me thinkest thou think too much to Billy Meyer. So to get back to the story of Dr. Frank Strange's and the way it relates to M Mr. McDonald was uh, Wendell Stevens was listening to him and they, they were, he was talking about UFOs and how it's all weather phenomenon or balloons and nonsense. And a bunch of the pilots that were required to take his course on weather were snickering in the back. And he goes, and so he went to the back to, after the words, what are you guys laughing about? What are you guys talking? You're supposed to be paying attention. They said, you're wrong about the extraterrestrial spaceships. We chase them. So they mm -hmm. gave him a schooling and McDonald, and you can look this up folks, uh, McDonald, um, went to, they don't talk about it, but he went to a, um, um, a uh, meeting, I think it was uh, Johnson was the president at the time, and uh, at a big dinner with the president there, and McDonald stood up at the back and goes, I'm talking to some guys that are pilots in front of a big kind of dinner room, and he says, What's this going on with UFOs? We understand they're real. And I want to get to the bottom of this. He was kind of like Dr. Frank once he got enlightened to the truth, hearing it from pilots, not from a religious preacher, which caused him to discount it completely. And uh, shortly after that, um, he uh, maybe even in the hospital room, he committed suicide like this, but he was lobotomized. So he's in the hospital in a coma and somehow he got out of his bed made it into the desert. It, maybe it happened to Tucson when he got home. I think that's where he's from. And he shot himself this way. So um, that was a hit because he embarrassed uh, and talked about the UFO. So Dr. Frank Stranges, and I'm sure James McDonald uh, would have apologized to him. There's another story that they uh, were uh, lambasting Dr. Frank Stranges and claiming that he was a drug dealer and using that was in the newspaper caused a lot of problems. But Dr. Frank Stranges was set up as a patsy by uh, a guy that said, come to Mexico and offered him a free trip and wanted to support him. And uh, they got arrested on the way back. The guy put in um, uh, some marijuana in the back. And Dr. Frank Stranges had no clue, no clue whatsoever. It's in the seventies. And he ended up getting sentenced to go into jail for like eight months or something, even though he was an unwitting participant. He was a pastor with the police department. He had a whole host of other service uh, and Christian related stuff, but they sentenced him, but guess what? It turned into a blessing, Alfred. And he uh, was in the, in the exercise yard and in walks Valley and Thor in a full suit, walking through a gate with a, with a clone of him, his exact duplicate, walking in. And, and Valiant Thor, they walked right out through security, just like he walked through the Pentagon, and he went aboard a starship that hovers above the Earth. And uh, he got to, to live there for like three or four months on board the starship. So that, that uh, blessing and that ridicule and that... Uh, situation turned into a blessing for him. And so um, there's a, a lot of amazing stories. Uh, and that's the one I'm going to reveal in the uh, in my chapter of the book that will be out with about Dr. Frank Stranges. But I can promise you he was a, a preacher. And at one of the last meetings I went to, he said, Valiant Thor came into my room last night. He said, Dr. Frank, don't preach so much. Now, <laughs> now Dr. Frank, um, Valiant Thor, spoke very highly of Christ. And uh, he spoke very highly of, of uh, Dr. Frank Stranges as well uh, to uh, other contactees. So what Dr. Frank said, he says, and in the meeting he said, uh, he said, uh, praise the Lord, hallelujah. <laughs> and I, after right, I said, doctor, he said, tell me not to preach. He goes, but praise the Lord, hallelujah. So Dr. Frank was very much 
a spiritual teacher. So if you think that that Christ is the Lucifer, you can do that. Now, the Freemasons, not every Freemason is a is a you know a cabal related pedophile. In fact, the Freemasons were part of the Venusian contingent long ago when the Freemasons and the Illuminati truly was the spiritual um, hidden hand working in the governments uh, of the world to bring about changes. Now, just like the birth of Jesus, he didn't create a church, but right after he died, uh, they couldn't stop the onslaught of faithful believers who had witnessed him raising people from the dead and all the stories of healing, the thousands of people who had met people who, who know that guy's crippled, now he's walking healthy. It was spreading like wildfire, the teachings of Christ, the message of brotherhood and forgiveness, hope, and that you don't need religious authorities to interpret for you, that you have Christ within you as your divine essence. So that was Christ's message. It was in opposition to the authorities, and he was hung on the cross for it. So they take that, and they turn it into a church with Constantine. And they put the priest in and interpreters of what God's law and rules are instead of what Christ taught, that the reflection of Christ is within you. So in the same way, um, they have uh, um, taken... Um, the the church and Christ teachings in turn the same way the Freemasons were recognized by the control network or the dark force or the cabal or the the greedy black sun group that's under the control of the hybrid interlopers to this planet that it took over this planet um, long ago and um, turned that into their dark agenda so that's being unwound now. So let's make clear, Christ, uh, uh, Dr. Frank Strangers was a Bible thumping uh, thing. I asked about him. They said he is now ascended to the seventh dimension and he teaches on board Valiant Thor's uh, uh, ship. Wonderful. Nice I'm, I'm, I'm so glad that, that you're able to clarify that, Robert. And now, I would like to ask you this because it's it's a question that that kept on coming up, both in terms of the information that the Venusian hierarchy of light were able to share with with your conference. Mm -hmm. Could you share with, with 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 our listeners a bit about what the Venusian connection to Jesus? is to jesus to christ okay and, uh, so yeah. so this is uh uh difficult for people to wrap the right mind around it but um the venusians uh, jesus identified with venus he said i am the bright and early morning star okay so that's what what he was he was from venus now, previously, it said Lucifer was a morning star, and that's when there was a very large planet bigger than Jupiter that exploded. That's another story. I won't go into that. Venus was a moon of that and changed its orbit and became uh, in its position now. That large planet is what we now know as the asteroid belt, the, the Kuiper belt, and the smaller particles are now what we know as the Oort cloud. So there's a lot of uh, history of the planet that I'm learning of the solar system and various aspects of the true history of the earth and the extraterrestrial influence. So from my understanding, and this is all over my website, and you can read this in the Gospel of Thomas, Dr. Frank Stranges was given a technology called the Urim and the Thummim, or the Seer and the Interpreter, that was, and he was given a breastplate that was worn by Aaron with the Ark of the Covenant. This was the way that the communication to guide mankind surreptitiously like Wizard of Oz behind the scenes to correct and alter the course and to uh, put uh, at bay the interlopers and the dark demons that had taken control of this planet at the time of the fall. And they had to allow that to occur because there were certain galactic laws that these interlopers could literally, if we they violated the higher dimensional agreements, um, 
of councils and stuff uh, and rules that they had made for interaction with the third dimension, those beings could and would blow up worlds and they still have that ability to a certain extent, although that's being curtailed now as many people are reporting as the various things. So as a various um, uh, contactees reporting on different reports and, and I can confirm some of those reports from, from the information that I, that I know. So um, I would just say that um, it's important that uh, people understand that history and that the dark and the light battle in the higher dimensions. So the reptilians lived tens of thousands of years. So when they were cast down into the earth, they um, kind of took over <laughs> and they uh, uh, made an agreement with the human population at that time. And um, to stop a war that was going on was very violent, very nasty war. But they said, if we take over, we're going to own and control your world. And the humans agreed and said, okay, do it. So they had permission to do that, but they instilled a parasitic control. They hate, they actually hated mankind and they hate God because mankind is slated to become a, a very highly developed. The souls from here can surpass even some of these beings in the higher dimensions. So that's the story that Dr. Frank Strange and a lot of this is evidenced in Dr. Keller's book in regards to the Bible and the casting down of, of uh, the, the demons and stuff. So to understand who Christ is, according to the Venusians, the Venusians actually come from a planet called Tau Ceti, and they're called the Norcans. And Corey Good actually mentioned that in his time when he was taken there briefly. He was in a, a valley, and he said he saw some ants or some insects. Those were actually bees that were observing him and reading his thoughts as to what had transpired when the Mayan group, the what uh, he called the Oompa Loompas, uh, Corey did, that um, had to called Corey up to distract a demon that had killed some of their people. They had him in a room and he was kind of in a place, but he was confined. And so Corey came in and the, the being was distracted and they were able to kill him. So um, a lot of these things are, are corresponding to the knowledge that I know uh, from a lot of the things. So there, there are things happening. So what the Venusian said, and I said, you know, um, you know, I, you know, I questioned them. I said, how can, how can God be the creator, be in one form, right? And, and yet within all other forms. So I, I got this clarity and it makes sense to me. So the Venusians came from Tau Ceti. Their planet was losing its atmosphere and they sent some spaceships here. They saw that they could live here, this environment that was, uh, 25 million years ago. So they, they landed on, crash landed on Mars, and I think a couple made it on Venus, and one maybe went past by. I don't know what the story, I think they sent four super huge ships to Venus. And um, the native population was the bees. And they made an agreement that they were a sentient species, and the women are more telepathic than amongst the Venusians. They put their left hand on the head of the bee and they got permission. So um, they were living on Venus. Now there was a, and I don't know if it, if he was an ascended master on Venus or on Tau Ceti, but within the Venusian, as we know them now, the Norcans officially from their ancient history would be called, um, it'd be, four brothers were born and they became ascended masters. And this is the being that is known and talked about in the theosophical, in the, um, um, uh, in the teachings of, of Madame Blavatsky, uh, of, of, uh, I'm sorry, uh, of Sunat Kumara. Sunat Kumara is a very high level ascended master who's been ascended for many millions of years. As an ascended master, he would go and appear to lower dimensional worlds, uh, fourth, fifth, sixth, third, and teach the, the teachings of love and God. So he had many, 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 many lifetimes, many, 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 many lifetimes. And he was uh, uh, part and parcel of 
uh, saving the earth after a cataclysm that took place to, to maintain the light and hold the energy here. And so he was chosen by what we call a creator's son. And this is in the Urantia book. So the creator's son, there are many of them, and they create galaxies. They are what is called the logos of a galaxy. As above, so below. So the logos of a galaxy creates all the planets and all the life within the entire galaxy. Okay. Now, there's billions of them with James Webb. We're just seeing galaxies without end. The physicists are getting schooled that they don't have a clue what's going on out there, what their thoughts are, right? So um, that creator's son must incarnate within his own incarnation, within his own creation. And on the low physical plane, it, he had chosen the earth to incarnate on. So as the author of all things, he knew that this earth would be important and that's what's taking place right now. Actually a reversal of the dark fall when Christ came here 2000 years ago and he had to come early uh, to when Satan, he was up in the mountain and I'm gonna explain the dark hierarchy. He said, um, he said, I'm, he says, I own the world. He said, what are you doing here? You got some powers, worship me. I own the world, I'll give you anything. And Christ said, no. Get thee behind me, Satan. So that literally was the judgment that we're seeing taking place now um, as the earth is rectifying this imbalance of the free will of higher dimensions. Everyone goes, I want to go to the fifth dimension. I want to go to the fifth dimension. <laughs> the moon is in the seventh house, you know? So, but reality, um, we look at these higher beings that were cast down, Lucifer and some of these legions of angels were cast down from the eighth or ninth or who knows what dimension and cast down. They're cast down into the to the fifth and sixth dimension. They're still beyond us. But in the universe where everything was pretty much very positive, there were some changes in the administration. This is detailed in the Arantia book on the planet called Havona or the Sea of Glass. I don't wanna to go too much into that, but basically um, um, there was a rebellion and it caused many worlds to fall. And we're now in the final stages of the cleaning up of that on the material levels. But those beings were taking advantage of agreements where the higher dimensionals were to nurture and to uplift and to guide the lower third dimensional realms of matter that would evolve into a species. And the Elohim and the Seraphim would augment and seed the planet and help with the genetic development of different species because these higher dimensionals actually can grow by lowering their vibration and incarnating in the earthly vehicle. Why? Because this is where the rubber meets the road. The material planes are the vanguard of spirit. So some of these souls that were stuck in the sixth dimension, not able to ascend, it was, it was uh, uh, ordained that this earth would be uh, a way for those beings to surpass even those beings. So that's the story kind of of Satan. So Christ came here to judge them. So when we talk about the infinite father, the full creator of everything, you can't talk about it because it's beyond all name and form, transcendent to all name and form, imminent within all name and form, and yet beyond all name and form. We're a drop of the ocean. And you're part and parcel of everything through the web of life, not only in this universe, but all others in all time and space, in all dimensions. And we look out, we see billions of galaxies. There's multi-dimensional worlds that we can't even fathom. So that infinite, pure, creative intelligence that I would define as the isness, Alex Collier and I agree on that, and, and or you could call it the unknowable, uh, the knower, knowing the known and the unknown. I mean, it doesn't, you can't wrap your mind around. So this pure creative force has created in the material realms or in the at least in the high, in the higher dimensions of what we understand a creator son to create a galaxy so as he reflects as the archangel michael not all archons are bad as many people think jj hertak makes that abundantly clear there's some positive archons and the fallen archons archons according to venusians are manipulators of matter 
ascended masters or dimensional beings that have the ability to understand thought and the process of creation and use God's creative force to uh, manifest. And we have those powers too, abundantly, but we're misled um, in our development to understanding that. So to go into God here, um, God is unknowable. The reflection of God we could see is the creator's sons. And then the reflection of the creator's son um, on earth became at the lower physical plane, became the ascended master, Jesus Christ, was to hold this being for three years, three and a half years. That was the time. At that point in time, he became what the Venusians call the living word of God made flesh. And they said, as such, he's worthy of worship. So I, I still was having problem with that. So he, he was kind of like a, a fractal of God, but so are we all. But he knew it, and he was the first one to uh, attain that. I asked about the other extraterrestrial groups. I said, did they, did they recognize that? And he says, yes, many do. He's established various regents on various worlds in the lower dimensional worlds. I said, what about the Pleiades? They said, the Pleiades is very materialistic. Most of them uh, in the Lyran system and, and around there are on what is called the fifth ray of concrete science and knowledge. They're very materialistic. They're some of the most advanced technological um, um, races in on the fourth and uh, dimension within the the galaxy that's for sure but they said they they see him as a great teacher they said the queen said sadly they see him as a great teacher only and all this is available on my website um that you can right. look at. so i'm sorry i've been really long-winded on these no, no 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 you get you know and and i want to just read you this uh which is directly connected it's it's from your website the prom the the promise revealed you say valiant thor is the leader of the solar council's mission to earth he was directly commissioned by sananda jehoshua the christ to oversee the planetary redemption plans to liberate earth and to make the people of Earth aware that we are not alone in the universe. Valiant Thor has also spoken to the United Nations on several occasions. He has worked with the governments of the world to offer them interplanetary culture exchange, which would allow the Earth to advance in terms of technology. So the mission of Valiant Thor did not end with Eisenhower. He's, he's still active. Is that and and he sort of this is part of the dynamics of current dynamics of Venus with Earth with the exopolitics of Earth is that what is occurring now? And this is with Sananda the Christ as appointing all of this. Is that what the case is? I do believe that that is the case, and that the Venusians have been our guardian sister planet for a long, long time. And uh, especially with the interlopers here, uh, they've been reporting. Uh, the Pleiadians have also been very, very involved, the Syrians and many other races within the Galactic Confederation of Light. The Pleiadians are not part of our confederation. We have 601 worlds and 51 systems. However, the Earth is getting a lot of attention now because this is one of the last strongholds of the Luciferian Satanist force that was cast down. So um, we're having a lot of attention here right now. And um, he was appointed by Christ. Um, and a uh, little side story here real quick. Uh, back in the Grecian times, um, there was a Saurian invasion and the Venusians as guardians came and did battle with a, a fleet of Saurians that were invading the earth to take over. And um, they, the the queen ship she was queen she was a victoria her name was queen victoria um formerly from earth most venusians are from earth and translate or ascend to the next chain of evolution in the higher dimensions to venus and uh she crash landed on mount olympus 
So here you have all the stories of by Jove and Jupiter and Zeus and Hercules and all these things. And the, the Grecian uh, generals made statues of her and were sacrificing animals to be victorious in war because the Venetians don't interfere with the human populace since Atlantean times, it was decided, leave them alone. We have to develop on our own because we worship them. Um, the, the extraterrestrials here would set themselves up as gods to be worshiped. We'd become envious of their technology. We'd resent them. So all contact and the other uh, groups um, have to agree to this because it's decided by our local system that and that the higher dimensionals and other beings are not to interfere with us on earth. They can work behind the scenes secretly, just as the dark guys are not allowed, reptilians aren't allowed to come on the surface and walk amongst us. It's all done Wizard of Oz behind the curtain. And this is what's coming now as a revelation to change all that. So definitely um, Valiant Thor, uh, is installed. He's in charge of entire fleets of ships. Not only do they have physical sheep, ships that are physically sitting there, sometimes cloaked, but there are two ships in the higher dimensional plane, the fifth dimension, guarding. So the reaction time is more immediate and quick. If anything takes place, um, there is defense. And it's a very exotic and powerful um, guardianship. They Years ago, they placed radio beacons on every uh, planet, on the moon, uh, on Mars, on Jupiter. There's these giant radio towers so that no matter where the planets are, they have instantaneous radio communication throughout the solar system for those that don't have the telepathic abilities of the Venusians like Alon, the 24-year-old security chief that I've met. Yeah, now you, you held an extraordinary conference and and you're held you're 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 holding uh next april 7th to 14th a a a cruise a hidden secrets cruise from uh los angeles down to mexico which which will have all of the links to uh and and so we certainly want to talk about that now okay. uh, yeah uh but but before we do that, I, I wanted to ask you this question to see whether it was appropriate. I know that one of the things that, one of the events that occurred uh, at your conference, which I was fortunate enough to present a PowerPoint at, and I feel very privileged to have done that, uh, was that Valiant Thor himself uh, delivered a verbal statement, which is very, very unusual. Recorded message. Recorded me 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 yeah, message. Yeah, I, right? I wasn't allowed to, to. Yeah. To release it, I can't do it anymore. I can share no, no. it privately. Yeah. Yeah. Not, yeah. 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 I wondered, uh, is that is the transcript? of that recorded message publicly shareable. Yes, and let me show you right where that is. I'm gonna share that real quick here. Yeah, is so, that something that that you can read for us now or? Yeah, I, I absolutely yeah. can do that. I've yeah, actually, could you do have, that? I have, yeah. I have it pulled up for us uh, um, uh, right here. I'm gonna pull it up for you. Oh, um, good. So you can actually read the message of Valiant Thor. It's, it's quite, uh, it's good. It's kind of the, it's a, it's a typical uh, message from Valiant Thor that Dr. Frank Strange is used to read. They 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 very not want to get involved in politics or economics with us. They do work clandestinely behind the scenes, but people are too triggered. There's too many egos, and they're not going to start making statements or telling stuff. But I'm going to read the actual message. From Valiant Thor here. And this is on my website, thepromiserevealed.net, under truth reference. I have a various uh, levels of blogs here that you can check out. So this is about four back. There's my conference there. There's about a, I'd say about a third of the people of the conference actually made it to the picture. Everyone's busy doing stuff. But I'm going to read the actual message 
from Valiant Thor. There's some questions and answers that we'll probably get into in the next meeting. There's a council meeting on a, 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 on a, 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 a spaceship called the Leviathan, which uh, is above the cloaked moon of Neith on Venus. There's Valiant Thor. So I'm going to read to you and his voice, his voice is kind of, it goes, uh, it's, it's an extract, uh, exact transcript of the voice recorded message that was played for those in attendance in the Mount Shasta Summer Conference. It reflects the same style of information given to Dr. Frank Stranges that he shared on the inner circle meetings throughout his time serving on the Council of Twelve for many years. Communique from Victor Fleet Commander Valiant Thor to the elect pilgrim souls on the Earth's material plane. Queen Orda, the Hierarchy of Light, and the Venus, Venus Angel Force extend their most gracious greetings to all assembled uh, uh, at the Look to Venus Morning Star Revelations Conference, now being held on the slopes of beautiful Mount Shasta in Northern California this July 9th, uh, 2022. Somehow they knew I was going to read it on the 9th. So your NASA and other space agencies of the earth have identified my ship as a legendary black knight. It's saucer shaped and approximately 300 feet in diameter. Our longitudinal flight path has shifted a few hundred miles to the west and has now taken us over your location in Northern California. We are moving from a Southern to Northern direction at this time, soon to pass over your North Pole. At such times our passing overhead in the twilight nighttime hours, you are invited aboard Victor One to attend night classes. You will lose track of time as it is measured on Earth while you are attending such classes on Victor One. You will find it a very rich experience, not soon to be forgotten. Despite your presence aboard this ship in your astral body, everything will seem quite solid and substantial. As the pursuit and acquisition of happiness by the elect ones of Earth is a designated mission of the Venusian Angel Force. You will discover that all you could possibly hope for aboard Victor One or any other Venusian spacecraft. You also meet many of the exalted beings of the Venusian Angel Force who work with me in carrying out my missions of enlightenment and peace throughout this quadrant of the Milky Way galaxy. They have all general human appearances, but there are some differences. And I said Angel Force refers to Venusians living and walking amongst the surface and people of the Earth, quietly influencing people toward peaceful relations and leading many people toward the truth in all of their endeavors, including scientists, musicians, military and financial influencers, to name a few. That includes star seeds from Venus, such as myself and Raymond. Do not be afraid when you encounter my splendid and longtime friend and associate, Yeo. He comes from a distant solar system nearly one with nearly 100 inhabited worlds orbiting a central sun. As there are so many worlds, each one has simply been designated by a number. Eo is, 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 uh, is, uh, is spelled Y-O, but pronounced as Y-E-O-H. Is about six feet, two inches in height and weights some 190 pounds. He has reddish complexion like the Native Americans of your world and has only one eye. The eye spans the same distance that exists across your face as two eyes. He looks rather scary at first, cyclopean. He has the ability to move his eye back and forth from side to side of his face to the other so that nothing escapes his rapt attention. His attention rivals that of the most astute scientist of Earth. He has in, in his being emanations of light. Yo, Eo looks forward to meeting you soon when you take your place as one of the students in one of the night classes. I, Valiant Thor, am now from the planet you call Venus, but which we refer to as Abahar. That means planet of the bees. Along with me and in instructing the night classes is another Venusian, Teal. That's his vice commander. She's about five inches in height and weighs about 180 pounds. She's immediately recognizable by her bright green eyes and flaming red hair. She's musically talented in vocals and instruments and usually opens all assembly meetings with an enchanting song. Another female instructor you are likely to meet is Barian Leal from a large moon of Jupiter that I'm not permitted to identify for you at this time for security reasons. She's about the same height as Teal, but weighs only about 125 pounds. What makes her stand out is her light blue skin color. She also has uh, sharp blue eyes and bright blue hair. Shoulder length, um, this co is common for most inhabitants of lunar colonies, no matter what their parent world might be. 
or area of expertise is diplomacy, getting people to talk with one another, uh, find common ground, um, and provide spiritual enhancement to life for all peoples. Our space navigator, engineer Helia Darina is considered the most advanced scientist in our space quadrant. He will acquaint you with some of the more advanced technology aboard Victor One and provide information as to the 601 planetary systems of the Galactic Confederation of Light within 51 solar systems. Uh, my vice commander, Don Thon, the resurrected Dr. Frank E. Strange's communications officer, Jill, and many others of the Victor One spacecraft free, fleet frequently sit in on the classes, observers, and as and seconds in the event an instructor is called away. From time to time, Yunaya, one of six ascended masters that makes visits to Victor One, will make a more frequent appearance. Yunaya has been guiding the Earth from behind the scenes since the beginning of life on your planet. He hails from the gold star planet at the fringe of your normal universe. This is all I can say about these personnel and classes at this time. Stay strong in the power of the blue flame and the agape love of the universal creator and his holy angels. Your adventure is soon to begin. We at Victor One believe that you have constituted one of the most important groups on the face of the earth today. Do not fail to take every opportunity to be kind to your brothers and sisters of your world. Let the light of the morning star rise in your hearts as filling your hearts with love for all. I want you to know that I love you all and wish you the happiest and most illuminating Venus Conference. May God bless and prosper the United States of America and protect her in the prophesized perilous days ahead. Robert Potter, an association of Dr. Frank Strangers and a member of the original Inner Circle, will now light a candle and invoke the Ring of Fire prayers for divine protection for you all in carrying out this mighty work initiated by Dr. Frank Strangers in the 1940s. Um, so uh, that's uh, that part of the of the talk. Wow, wow. And, and so he actually brought a special blessing for the United States of America. So does the United States of America have a special spiritual identity in the larger scheme of things on planet Earth as um, opposed to other nations, well, would you say? I think it's one of the major, of course, the major powers. They're all part of the Black Sun, but the America has been the military arm. And so there's been a tremendous amount of control and manipulation that you know, puts us probably as one, two, I, I would say put us, uh, you got Korea's probably number one uh, in mind control and, and you know, suppression of, of truth. China's probably right in there. Yeah. And, uh, but China's so big that people get away. I mean, America, England and Germany are probably, are some of the most controlled and manipulated and ignorant right right so but i mean people what i was getting at not capable we created really the i'm still here can you hear me yeah we seem to have gone into some territory that can you hear me yes i can yes i can 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 you okay, hear me good. yeah yeah, this is this is this is my question. Yes, I can. Yeah, good. My question is this, not so much what the dark parts of these nations like the US, Britain, Germany, China, and Russia are doing, but in the original conception of the constitutional USA, does that have a spiritual, a special spiritual identity, or is that mythology, in your opinion? That was, you hit a very good point there, because the Ascended Master, St. Germain, uh, and Ascended Master, one of the, the elder brothers who've been guiding the divine plan on earth to see to it, you know, nothing's going to stop the divine plan and the great work of the redemption of planet earth and the ushering in of the new earth and the new age and the uh, ascension of the peoples of earth that's already done deal there's tremendous actions being taken place by ground command and i'm going to say it pisses a lot of people off but her name is kimberly ann gogan and with what's going on right now the reports of taking place are 
uh, we're gonna, everyone's gonna know her name very soon. But the earth is very important in that. The Venusians actually have been very instrumental in many worlds behind the scenes. They have representatives uh, of all nations in all countries and they monitor very closely um, every thought, word, and deed of many of the world's elite cabal, royal elite families that have tried to control and harvest human energy and to destroy this world in the name of Satan. And they're still attempting it at the highest levels of those that are left. Many of these foreign interlopers have been removed and had their souls reset or they choose to suicide inside their soul based on the recognition of the karma as they're brought before the great judge of themselves in the revelation of the higher dimensional courts. So I'm going to say that um, uh, an important part is the Venusians influence. The earth, see, America was one of the last countries to uh, bring so many different cultures here. This was the land of the free. It was virgin ground. Unfortunately, we didn't do it respectfully and we wiped out the Indians along the way. But working within the limitations of, of the dark influences and the human condition, the Venusians did seek to influence our founding fathers. And for those of you who follow my work, um, I have met the commander of the moon base. Her name is Commander Aura Range. She's well documented as being a contactee of many other contactees of meeting her, Truman Bethran, um, and uh, notably Daniel Fry for, who wrote the White Sand Incidents, uh, uh, knew her as well as uh, he knew Alon, the security chief that I met as well. So that's who sent Daniel Fry the spaceship and gave him a ride to New York and back back in the 50s. So the commander of the moon base, Aura Rains, uh, spoke to me that she had met Benjamin Franklin, Thomas Jefferson, Thomas Paine, I'm sure many others. These were ones that I asked because Thomas Paine wrote The Rights of Man. Uh, Benjamin Franklin was actually head of the Masonic Lodge. Back then it was called the Resistance because they met in secret and um, he did what's called the Boston Tea Party, kind of a, a blank you to the, the British and their control network and their, their uh, stealing of harvesting of human energy and power. Money represents your energy and is a power. And that's one of the main control networks of the bad guys. So uh, I said, did, did, did you help him with electricity? And she, she coyly answered, uh, I may have led him into certain uh, avenues of research that may have led him to that. And then I, I said, does, you know, I know that uh, Thomas Jefferson would be sitting in his room coming back from a long ride and he'd open up his lock study and she would be sitting there on his uh, divan or whatever. And she had papers for him to educate him. I've also been present where with uh, uh, where contactees gather and are given information to meet extraterrestrials and physically exchange uh, contacts. That's from other stuff. And that's kind of, I can't really talk too much about that. That was years ago, but um, there's um, definitely a, a hands-on approach for initiates and for those who can keep their mouth closed uh, to certain aspects, but to properly deliver messages without ego or thoughts of uh, monetary aggrandizement or something like that. So I got to be careful. I'm just a postman. I'm not to be concerned with right. how you react. So right, right. Well, l listen. Thank you for all of that. Now, you were going to tell us about a very special hidden secrets cruise that is oh, yeah. planned for April seventh to fourteenth, twenty twenty three, and we're going to put the links to that in the uh, <clears throat> program description to this program, because that'll be sort of the follow-up to this, to this conference. Right. And, yeah. I, I do appreciate that, Alfred. And, um, and I'm going to just share the screen here real quick. So um, this is the uh, homepage of my website here. Oops. I got to go back. I have these sliders here, but uh, this one right here, um, I am not putting it on. I'm a speaker. So Oh, I see. Uh, yeah. Oh, I'm oh, I'm sorry. Yeah. I would like I, to say I, if you I do go here, that. 
if you sign up under me, I offering three different workshops and you get a, you get a free one of my healing sessions. I've been a massage therapist for many, many years. And so I'm offering a couple of things. So you can uh, uh, share your significant other by learning about the cruise here. And when you sign up, you just, that you actually required to say where you got your information, but if you do mine, you get there now. So all the information's here, there's, there's no, um, there's no, um, vaccines or masks or tests required whatsoever for this trip. So you're free to go. We're going to go down to Cabo San Lucas. We're going to be going to Puerto Vallarta and Mazatlan. Uh, and uh, I guess I should share a little bit more here. I, I just want to uh, share. We have some other great speakers. Brad Olson's going to be there. Um, uh, Jimmy Church, uh, Nick Pope, uh, Laura Eisenhower, Maureen St. Germain, Suzanne Shumsky, she's heading it up, Dr. Suzanne, uh, Paula Harris, um, and, and others are going to be here at this conference uh, speaking on the tour. Now, you, they actually have an incredible discount if you have two people. And for anybody who wants to go, contact me. I'm putting people together. There's a woman right now who wants to sign up at the same time. I think you save... Uh, you know, 250 bucks. It includes all food. Um, and uh, it's basically, I think it's 1200 bucks or 1199 or something like that. So, um, um, and I think it becomes, I forget what it is. I, I don't even know the price. I actually didn't look, but right. it's included. It's included. It might be more. I should, should look, but we, we go down and we're going to, uh, we're going to uh, Cabo San Lucas. I know they've had a hurricane, but we'll just, that's just kind of like a go and enjoy the nature, do a jet ski, take a sail, get some sun, buy a lobster, get some stuff. And then we're going to go to, uh, we're going to go to Puerto Vallarta and we're going to have a day excursion there and we're going to go to Mazatlan. So um, you get a nice stateroom food and all the enjoyment of the boat and, you know, with all the things they have. I've never been on a cruise, so I'm kind of excited. Oh, good, to good. So that that's a fun and, trip. Yeah. Now, now th this is this is a uh, part one of a three part series, and and we'll be doing the part two of the three parts series next Monday, uh, September nineteenth, and so we'll we'll be looking forward uh, to that. And I just want to give an advance. Uh, We'll be talking about earth changes, a hydrogen cloud, uh, a, a, a parallel earth, number four. But we'll be talking about the breakthrough, which is a new society and global restoration plan. So mm -hmm. there's a lot coming up. And uh, you're a guide through that. And so thank you very, very much. Uh, thank you. It, yeah, go ahead. Sorry. I want to say thank you very much for having me on. Also, for those of you who are interested, you can join my inner circle. And um, um, right now I'm in a, I've had some financial <laughs> setbacks. I had a computer blow up, a car explode, and uh, I'm offering some incredible discounts on some of my more expensive items. In fact, you're going to get them for about cost or less even. That's just materials on some of my products. So if you join up, I'm going to, you get a newsletter and you're going to get, uh, direct offers uh, from the newsletter, uh, and it would help me out. I really would appreciate it. I normally, I, you know, I do have uh, donations. Some people will give them, but it's not really, um, I like to, to just offer discounts and stuff. So um, anybody who's interested in this information and would like to help out or interested in some of my wonderful products, the pyramids that I sell and the pyramid systems, these jewelry designs are like this one's normally, um, um, running at uh, about a thousand dollars solid silver and i'm uh, offering that for like uh you know 800 bucks or eight seven ninety nine or eight eight fifty right now basically i just need to recoup the money for the ones i've made to to move on to the <laughs> to the to the next uh step to take care of rent and stuff but sure. thank you so much alfred i appreciate you letting me share this oh yeah totally and and we'll put all of those links in the in the program this in the program description and we appreciate very much the sort of the in-depth introduction 
uh, that I have learned a tremendous amount today. And I think I now, I now grok at a deeper level uh, the relationships uh, between the local creator sun, Venus, Earth, Valiant Thor, uh, all of that. So thank you so much. Again, could you give your 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 website? Yeah, it's the promiserevealed.net, uh, H-T-T-P-S, whatever those forward slash, um, we'll take you there. You can Google my name, Robert, Rob Potter or Robert Potter. And uh, it's been an honor. And I, I look forward to when you can travel and get here soon because we need to have you at my conference. Um, I mean, um, I know the restrictions are off. I, are you still banned from coming to the USA? No, no, I, I, I'm not really. I was uh, there. I, I haven't been in, in, in an airplane for over a decade. And uh, uh, there, there were some uh, close allies of mine and readers that sent me dreams that they had that said uh, that they saw in, in, in newspapers that said, oh, the great peace, supporter of peace, Alfred Weber, his plane went down and he was killed. And this was at the height of my traveling around the world to attend conferences. And so believe, I, I'm a great believer in precognition. And yeah. so uh, at that point, I just went, you know, I'm just letting go of the need to travel physically. And I'm just going to do, do it virtually. But that's, I'm sharing you with can, you. Always take a, you can always take a road trip. It's not that far. That, that's right. I said, I, I, I said to myself, yeah, yeah. I, I, I said, we can always go by a car. And so that is why I have not been tra 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 traveling. So perhaps you will see me down there. We'll, let's, let's, we'll let's see. Work on, let's work on next year. Um, you know, yeah. I'll, I'll take care of your room and board and all that <laughs> gas money. Okay. Okay. Let's, I'm serious. Let's, let's bring it. I, 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 I know I've got to consult my, my brilliant other half, doc, Dr. Jerry DeStefano Weber, who, actually drives our family automobile but we'll see there you go let's okay. go let's get you let's get you down here okay good good enough then well li li listen thank you very much and we look forward to monday when we'll go to part two of this awesome series thank, thank you, you so, so much all right yeah. god bless you bye okay bye-bye god bless